Hello, welcome to week two, day three of Mark and the Marked. Uh, and we have a special guest with us today, Mr. Yay! Jack Lake. Woo! Woo! <laughs> um, so Jack is our composer and MD on the show, musical director. Um, so we're going to have a little chat today about the music and the sound and how we're kind of running the tech on the show. Um, so, Jack, you've, you've done the show in two different forms, haven't you? Um, do you want to tell us about the kind of the two many hats of Jack Wakey? Yeah, so, um, so I've uh, played this show live twice before. So the first time I did it, it was one of my very first professional jobs. Um, and it was very acoustic, so I sort of had like an acoustic drum kit um, and uh, an acoustic double bass. Uh, and it was all sort of running through a loop pedal. So then the second time I did this show again live, um, I sort of still used the loop pedal, but then went very electric with it. Um, and that is most of the music that I've sort of based this version of. This time, I'm not touring live with the show, so the cast are very cleverly, very cleverly uh, triggering everything as they go through some technical magic that I actually don't know how it works. Um, it's, it's a technical magic, <laughs> technical magic. That's what, that's what I said. I have a big yeah. um, And so this time I have recorded versions of the music that I did last time. Um, um, but it, because they're recorded, it means they can be a little bit fuller um, for the cast to trigger. Yeah, cool. And we've also got, we're using like a mixture of um, tracks that just play all the way through of Jack's beautiful music and we can program in if we want them to fade out or if we want them to like stop dead but then we've also got some fun things called, what are they called like hot buttons, hot keys? Just buttons, buttons, yeah. buttons, yeah. buttons that make a noise. Sound buttons. So some of the sound effects, um, are, there's some moments in the show where we're using the sound uh, in a more kind of obvious way I guess, more like a kind of foreground way, uh, which is quite fun, it's been a challenge for us thinking how to work that into the action of the show and the action of the scene so it doesn't feel like one of the cast has to step out and become a sound op. Mm. Um, uh, so we're having to be quite careful running at speed, throwing an iPad at each other, yeah. not breaking. <laughs> <laughs> so how's the music, um, what, have you got favourite moments of the music? Um, yeah, I really like um, Bullfight because it's just so <laughs> dramatic <laughs> and it just really does something for me. And then, <laughs> and my inner matador is like, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's definitely my favourite one. Yeah, I like the mat rolling one just because of the jazz flutes. And yeah. it's just, it's just happy. It's nice. And then in contrast, I think it's yeah, the slightly darker scenes. It's got a more bassy and like guitar rock. And I'm like, yeah, come on. Yeah. The mat rolling one is also the catchiest tune ever. Uh, yes, I've been singing it for about a month. <laughs> I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I like Dark Piggy. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a turn and changes the whole play, I think. Um, I don't think that one's actually more catchy than the Jazz Flute. Really? Yeah, yeah, I would just see myself singing Dark Piggy before. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of sinister, but there we go. Very intense, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we've been working with the music uh, from day one which has been amazing to have that all in the space and to play with. Um, but uh, Jack, you've been kind of adjusting as we go and today you're in with us today. So what you kind of, what's, what's the next step in your process kind of before we're ready to rock? Yeah, um, so the, the main thing for me, because last time uh, it was all based around a loop pedal, um, it meant that I sort of, a lot of it was uh, sort of repeated ideas that I would have a cue line that I'd know exactly when to move on to the next section. So each section sort of builds on what the actors are doing. Obviously, because that's not live this time, um, I sort of need to make sure it's really timed to what uh, these guys have found in the space. So I sort of made a version that I think roughly fit, so now I think it's really important to come in, see what you guys are doing, uh, see how you're pacing things, and then make those cuts, make those changes so that the piece flows to what you found rather than you trying to fit to what the piece is doing. Mm. Which is a tricky negotiation because of course loads of the show is still basically games. It still is a lot of fluidity in the possible timings. So yeah, it's kind of interesting like a negotiation, isn't it, where you guys are needing to like be there and be present in the scene and play the game, but also keep like half an ear out going, oh, we're getting to that bit. We should probably crack on now. I think that was a really interesting thing in composing because I didn't want to make any of the sections too big and too different because I think 
if you were composing for film and TV, say, you could sort of completely change the music to hit like this beat. Yeah. But obviously I don't want to lock you guys into like, oh, we have to do every single step exactly the same because then you lose what I think is the main joy of this show. Yeah. So it's making something that changes, that reflects what's happening, but if you're, you know, 30 seconds out, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect things. Yeah, yeah. otherwise you'd have to be counting for 47 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, I lost count. Probably would lose something. Oh, 326 or 327, <laughs> ah! Brilliant. Um, so yeah, today's process uh, is going to be clicking bits of the sound together, we're going to have some live music today, which is lunch, um, ready for kind of end of the week when everything comes together. <laughs>